Hey guys, I'm Ryan from Contender Bicycles. Today we're gonna to talk about the TQ motors. There's a lot of noise out there right now about like DJI and the new Bosch motor and all these 100 Newton meter motors. I'm of the belief that bigger isn't always better in this category. Personally, I've had a ton of fun on these bikes myself. So the TQ motors, it's a smaller motor company from Germany, but they've been doing motors in other industries such as aerospace and medical for quite a while. In the bike industry, they're primarily working with people like Trek, BMC, Scott, Pinarello, Mondraker. There's quite a few people doing it, but it just probably hasn't created the buzz of the bigger motor companies. For myself personally, I really got hooked on the lightweight e-bike through like the original Orbea Rise. And while a lot of bikes seem to go from there and go up in power and bigger batteries, myself, I went the other way and went to lighter and lesser power motors. So in general, the TQ motor is designed to be a small form factor, fairly quiet, and just kind of have that natural bike feel. The motors that have been out there so far is the 50. So that's a 50 Newton meter motor. I've ridden that a bunch on the road and on mountain bikes. Now they've added a lighter weight 40 Newton meter motor and then a 60 Newton meter motor and different battery options and whatnot. So since most of the bikes that are in the stores now and what we've had experience with is the HPR 50, we're gonna focus on that motor today. The 50 denotes it as 50 Newton meters of torque. It has 300 watts of output and then it can be packaged with different batteries, but typically you see it with a 360 watt hour battery. And then you could supplement that with 160 watt range extender. Just the motor itself is about four pounds and then the 360 watt battery is probably in the neighborhood of another five pounds. A mountain bike like this BMC four stroke amp ends up being around 39 pounds. The other motor competitors, like we mentioned, is the specialized motor on the Levo SL, the Fazua Ride 60, which you'll see on a lot of Cervelos and the Santa Cruz Skitch and Heckler SL. So going back to the battery, we talked about a 360 watt battery and then a 160 watt range extender. In the future, you will see like bigger battery options for the torqueier motor and smaller batteries battery options for the less torquey motor. Um, from my experience on the 360 watt battery on this bike, um, I've been able to ride probably about 20 miles and 4,000 feet of vertical and was just barely getting to the end of the battery. And then having the range extender is a good way to just kind of decrease the range anxiety. If you really wanted to go on a monster ride, you could carry a couple extenders and it's pretty easy to take them off and just plug them in. The batteries will recharge fully in about three hours. So one of my favorite things about these bikes is that they're pretty stealthy. They don't just stink of being an bike the shape and the form factor of the bike like this bike barely looks bigger than a normal mountain bike but also the bike's super quiet it creates just a little tiny hum you probably can barely hear over like the noise of the tires rolling along on the ground and then just the pedal feel is really natural if you're pedaling it with the motor off or something you can tell it's not your normal bike but it's just barely different so I guess the question is who is this motor for and I would argue that while there's a place for the full powered bikes, to me this might be the bike for the, the people who have been riding in the past and they just want a little bit of help or maybe they want to cover their loop a little bit faster or somebody who still wants to enjoy like the feel of riding a normal mountain bike and still get a workout. I actually find that when I ride my bike and I'm in that I like, get a workout mindset, I actually am probably more willing to push myself hard knowing I have the motor and the assistance to fall back on. So where would you use a bike like this? In the mountain bike world, you might use it on a loop where there's a steep climb and you know, you, know, you might not do the loop if you couldn't get up the climb. Also, having a bike that's 38 or 39 pounds is a lot more, it's a lot more agile and kind of maneuverable than a 53 or 54 pound e-bike. Who might not want a TQ bike? Typically, that would be somebody who does want a full power bike, whether that's because they're a heavier rider or they're just doing kind of laps at a park and they want bigger travel, you know, just more capable bikes. Um, that would, those would be people who might benefit from the, these newer 100 Newton meter bikes. One other thing to factor in is that on the road bikes, while they're class three motors and that they will go over 20 miles an hour, they aren't gonna assist you to 28 miles an hour like an Orbea Denna or a specialized Creo will. The TQ motor on like this BMC ERS or on this road machine amp is gonna get you to about 24 or 25 miles an hour and then after that, it's pretty much all you. We've been doing TQ bikes for about three years and some of the new things that maybe have come out, even though the motors haven't changed drastically, is on like a bike with Shimano, you can now control the motor from the DI2 buttons on top of the hoods. So that's a cool feature. Some of the people weren't psyched about having to push this button on the top two for changing through the assist levels. So in the end, I think the 
the thing that sums it all up is that the TQ bikes are for the cyclist who wants to remain a cyclist. It just makes the experience that much more fun and I'd really encourage you to give one a try. So thanks for watching and check us out at our website www.contenderbicycles or in the store.